In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions commonly posed to solutions architects. These questions are designed to evaluate both technical expertise and problem-solving abilities in real-world scenarios. 1. What is your experience with cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud? I have extensive experience working with AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. In AWS, I have designed serverless architectures using Lambda and DynamoDB, which allowed for cost-effective scalability. On Azure, I implemented solutions utilizing Azure Functions and Cosmos DB for global distribution and low latency. In Google Cloud, I leveraged BigQuery for data analytics, optimizing performance on large datasets. My approach involves evaluating each platform's strengths and aligning them with business requirements, ensuring efficient resource utilization while maintaining high availability and security. 2. How do you approach designing a scalable and highly available architecture? Designing a scalable and highly available architecture involves several key principles. First, I prioritize the use of load balancing to distribute traffic evenly across servers, preventing any single point of failure. I implement auto-scaling mechanisms that adjust resources based on demand, ensuring performance during peak times. Utilizing microservices architecture allows for independent scaling of different components. Data redundancy through replication across multiple regions enhances availability. Additionally, I incorporate health monitoring and automated recovery processes to swiftly address failures, maintaining system reliability and uptime. 3. Explain the concept of microservices architecture and its benefits. Microservices architecture is an approach where an application is structured as a collection of loosely coupled services. Each service is independently deployable, scalable, and can be developed in different programming languages. This architecture enhances flexibility, as teams can work on individual services without affecting the entire application. Benefits include improved scalability, as services can be scaled independently based on demand. It also promotes resilience, if one service fails, it doesn't compromise the entire system. Additionally, microservices facilitate continuous integration and delivery, allowing for faster development and deployment cycles. 4. What strategies do you use for data storage and management in large-scale systems? For data storage and management in large-scale systems, I focus on a combination of strategies. First, I evaluate the type of data being handled to determine if structured or unstructured storage is more suitable, opting for relational databases for structured data and NOSQL for unstructured data. I leverage distributed databases to ensure scalability and redundancy, incorporating sharding and partitioning techniques as needed. Data replication across multiple regions enhances availability and disaster recovery. Additionally, I implement data lifecycle management practices, including archiving and purging, to optimize storage costs while maintaining performance. 5. How do you ensure security in your architectural designs? Ensuring security in architectural designs involves multiple layers of protection. First, implement a robust identity and access management IAM, system to control user permissions. Next, employ encryption for data at rest and in transit, safeguarding sensitive information. Regular security assessments and vulnerability scans are crucial for identifying potential weaknesses. Additionally, adhere to security best practices such as the principle of least privilege and secure coding standards. Monitoring and logging activities help detect any anomalies, allowing for quick responses to potential threats. Finally, conducting regular training for development teams on security awareness is essential. 6. Describe your experience with containerization technologies like Docker and Kubernetes. Containerization has been pivotal in modern application development. I have extensive experience using Docker for packaging applications and their dependencies into containers, ensuring consistency across various environments. With Kubernetes, I have orchestrated container deployment, scaling, and management, leveraging its powerful features for load balancing and service discovery. This combination has enabled me to streamline CI, CD pipelines and improve application resilience. I have also implemented monitoring and logging solutions to maintain visibility into containerized applications, enhancing operational efficiency and enabling quick troubleshooting. 7. What is your approach to disaster recovery and business continuity planning? Disaster recovery and business continuity planning involve identifying critical business functions and the risks that could disrupt them. I start by conducting a thorough risk assessment and business impact analysis to prioritize systems and data. Then, I develop a recovery strategy that includes backup solutions, redundancy, and failover mechanisms. Regular testing of the disaster recovery plan is crucial to ensure effectiveness and employee readiness. I also incorporate training and awareness programs, so all stakeholders understand their roles during a disaster, 
ensuring a swift and organized response. 8. Walk me through your process for gathering requirements and translating them into technical solutions. Gathering requirements begins with engaging stakeholders through interviews and workshops to understand their needs and objectives. I employ techniques like user stories and use cases to clarify functionality. Once requirements are documented, I prioritize them based on business impact and feasibility. Next, I translate these requirements into technical specifications by collaborating with development teams, ensuring alignment with architectural principles. Prototyping may be used to validate designs early on. Regular feedback loops with stakeholders help refine the solutions, ensuring they meet expectations before implementation. 9. How do you handle conflicting stakeholder requirements in your designs? Handling conflicting stakeholder requirements involves several steps. First, I prioritize open communication, facilitating discussions to understand each stakeholder's needs and concerns. Utilizing a collaborative approach, I aim to find common ground or compromise solutions that satisfy multiple parties. If necessary, I present data-driven arguments to support design choices, ensuring alignment with the project's objectives. Regular feedback loops keep stakeholders engaged and informed throughout the process. 10. Describe a complex technical problem you solved and the approach you took. One complex problem I encountered involved optimizing a data processing pipeline that struggled with latency issues due to high input volumes. First, I conducted a thorough analysis to identify bottlenecks, discovering that the data ingestion phase was the main culprit. I then implemented a distributed messaging system to decouple data sources from processing components, allowing for asynchronous data flow. I also optimized data processing algorithms and introduced parallel processing techniques. These changes significantly reduced latency and enhanced throughput, improving user experience and system efficiency. 11. How do you balance performance, cost, and maintainability in your architectural decisions? Balancing performance, cost, and maintainability involves assessing each factor's impact on the system. Start by establishing clear performance requirements and understanding user expectations. Optimize for performance through efficient algorithms and resource usage while considering cost implications. Use cloud services with pricing models that align with usage patterns to manage costs effectively. Maintainability is achieved by adhering to design principles like modularity and documentation. Prioritize technologies that are well-supported and have a strong community, ensuring long-term viability and easier updates. Engaging stakeholders early helps align priorities and make informed trade-offs. 12. What factors do you consider when choosing between different technology stacks? Choosing a technology stack involves several critical factors. First, evaluate the project requirements, including scalability, performance, and security needs. The team's expertise with specific technologies should also influence the decision, as familiarity can improve productivity and reduce errors. Consider the community support and documentation available for each technology, as strong support can facilitate problem-solving. Additionally, assess the long-term viability of the technology, including its update frequency and ecosystem maturity. Lastly, factor in integration capabilities with existing systems and tools, ensuring seamless communication across the architecture. 13. How do you explain complex technical concepts to non-technical stakeholders? When explaining complex technical concepts, I focus on clarity and relatability. I start by breaking down the concept into simpler terms and using analogies that resonate with their experiences. Visual aids, such as diagrams or slides, can help illustrate key points and make the information more digestible. I encourage questions throughout the discussion, ensuring that stakeholders feel comfortable seeking clarification. Tailoring the conversation to their level of understanding and addressing their specific concerns fosters better communication and builds trust in the technical solutions proposed. 14. Describe your experience leading and mentoring development teams. Leading and mentoring development teams has been a significant part of my career. I focus on fostering an environment that encourages collaboration, innovation, and continuous learning. I prioritize understanding each team member's strengths and areas for growth, allowing me to assign tasks that align with their skills. Regular one-on-one -on -one meetings provide opportunities for feedback and guidance. I also encourage knowledge sharing through pair programming and code reviews, creating a culture of support. This approach not only improves team performance but also helps individuals reach their full potential. 15. How do you handle disagreements with team members or clients about architectural decisions? When disagreements arise regarding architectural decisions, I prioritize open communication and active listening. I encourage all parties to express their viewpoints and concerns, fostering a collaborative environment. I aim to understand the underlying reasons for differing opinions, which often reveal valuable insights. 
Once all perspectives are gathered, I facilitate a discussion focused on project goals, constraints, and potential impacts of each approach. Using data and evidence to support decisions is crucial. If necessary, I suggest running experiments or prototypes to evaluate options before finalizing the architecture. 16. What strategies do you use to stay current with emerging technologies and industry trends? Staying current with emerging technologies requires a multifaceted approach. I regularly participate in online courses and webinars to deepen my understanding of new tools and practices. Subscribing to industry journals, blogs, and newsletters helps me keep up with trends. Networking with peers at conferences and meetups allows for knowledge exchange. I also engage in hands-on experimentation with new technologies through personal projects or contributions to open-source initiatives. This practical experience solidifies understanding and keeps skills sharp in a rapidly evolving field. 17. How do you prioritize tasks and manage your time across multiple projects? Effective prioritization involves assessing the urgency and impact of each task. I utilize techniques like the Eisenhower matrix to categorize tasks as urgent or important. Daily stand-up meetings help ensure alignment with team members, allowing for quick adjustments based on project needs. Time management tools, such as Trello or Asana, enable tracking progress across projects. I also allocate specific time blocks for focus work, minimizing distractions. Regular reviews of project timelines help in adjusting priorities and ensuring that critical deadlines are met. 18. Describe your experience with Agile methodologies and how you've applied them in your work. Agile methodologies have been integral to my approach in software development. I have worked extensively with Scrum and Kanban. In my previous roles, I facilitated daily stand-ups, sprint planning, and retrospectives, fostering collaboration among cross-functional teams. I emphasized iterative development, allowing for frequent feedback and adjustments. This approach not only improved team morale but also enhanced product quality. By prioritizing user stories based on business value, I ensured that deliverables aligned with stakeholder expectations, resulting in successful project outcomes. 19. How do you ensure that projects stay on track and within budget? Ensuring projects stay on track and within budget requires meticulous planning and continuous monitoring. I begin by setting clear, achievable milestones while allocating resources effectively. Regular check-ins with team members help identify potential obstacles early. I use project management tools to track progress and budget utilization, allowing for timely adjustments. Open communication with stakeholders is vital. It ensures alignment on expectations and facilitates swift decision-making when changes arise. By fostering a culture of accountability within the team, we can collectively address challenges and maintain focus on project goals. 20. What metrics do you use to measure the success of your architectural solutions? Measuring the success of architectural solutions involves several key metrics. Performance metrics, such as response time and throughput, indicate how well the system handles load. Scalability can be assessed by monitoring how the system performs under increased demand. Availability metrics, like uptime percentage, ensure the system is reliable. Additionally, cost effectiveness is evaluated through operational costs versus budget. User satisfaction can be gauged through feedback and usage patterns. Finally, technical debt measurements help maintain long-term sustainability of the architecture. 21. How would you design a system to handle sudden spikes in traffic? To design a system that can handle sudden spikes in traffic, I would implement auto-scaling capabilities to dynamically adjust resources based on demand. Using a load balancer can efficiently distribute incoming requests across multiple servers, ensuring no single server becomes overwhelmed. Caching mechanisms, such as using Redis or Memcached, would help reduce database load by storing frequently accessed data. Additionally, employing a content delivery network, CDN, can offload static assets and enhance performance. Finally, monitoring tools should be integrated to track system performance and identify bottlenecks in real-time. 22. Describe how you would migrate a legacy monolithic application to a microservices architecture. Migrating a legacy monolithic application to a microservices architecture involves several steps. First, conduct a thorough analysis of the existing application to identify its components and dependencies. Next, prioritize the migration of functionalities based on business value and complexity. Start by developing new microservices for the highest priority features, ensuring they are independently deployable. Implement an API gateway to manage requests and facilitate communication between services. Gradually refactor the monolith, extracting functionalities into microservices while maintaining data consistency and integrity. 
Use containerization for deployment and orchestrate with Kubernetes for scalability. Test each service comprehensively before full deployment. 23. How would you approach designing a real-time data processing system for a large e-commerce platform? When designing a real-time data processing system for a large e-commerce platform, I would start by identifying key data sources, such as transaction logs, user interactions, and inventory updates. Implementing a streaming architecture using tools like Apache Kafka or AWS Kinesis can facilitate the ingestion of real-time data. Processing would leverage frameworks like Apache Flink or Spark Streaming to perform transformations and analytics. Ensuring low latency, I would optimize data storage solutions, possibly using NOSQL databases. Finally, I would implement monitoring and alerting systems to maintain performance and reliability. 24. What considerations would you make when designing a multi-region, globally distributed application? Designing a multi-region, globally distributed application requires several key considerations. First, data consistency and latency must be addressed. Employing eventual consistency models can help. Second, you should implement geo-redundancy to ensure availability and resilience against regional outages. Third, network performance is crucial. Using content delivery networks, CDNS, can optimize content delivery. Security is another priority, particularly with compliance to local regulations in different regions. Lastly, monitoring and logging should be implemented across all regions for effective troubleshooting and performance assessment. 25. How would you design a system to ensure compliance with data privacy regulations like GDPR? Designing a system for GDPR compliance involves several key considerations. First, implement data minimization by collecting only necessary information. Ensure user consent is obtained before data collection, with clear options to withdraw consent. Incorporate features for data access and deletion requests, allowing users to manage their data. Use encryption for data at rest and in transit, safeguarding sensitive information. Regular audits and impact assessments can help identify and mitigate risks. Establish clear data retention policies, ensuring data is not kept longer than necessary. Training staff on compliance practices is essential for maintaining a culture of privacy. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more insights and tips on acing your interviews. Good luck on your journey to becoming a successful solutions architect.